When picturing expensive US military equipment on land, it's easy to think of vehicles like armored personnel carriers, tanks, or even mobile missile launchers for systems like the Patriot or THAAD missile defense system. But there's one piece of mobile equipment on land that's an order of magnitude more expensive. Radars. Modern mobile radar units are the single most expensive vehicles on the ground, such as the radar for the Patriot missile defense system, known as the AN-MPQ-65A, at a price of $115 million per unit. That means that a single radar for the Patriot missile defense system is worth as much as seven of the latest M1A2 Abrams tanks. The high cost of these radars is driven by their thousands of advanced gallium nitride sensors that create immense computational demands requiring supercomputer level processing, all of which must be engineered to survive the harshest conditions. Some of the Patriot radars are being replaced with the even more expensive LTAMDS, short for Lower Tier Air and Missile Defense Sensor, at a price of $130 to $159 million per unit, making it the second most expensive vehicle. This radar has twice the capability as the previous radar. However, the most expensive mobile equipment on the ground is currently the radar for the THAAD Missile Defense System, known as the TPY-2 radar, at an average cost of $264 million per radar, which is equivalent to the price of 17 of the latest Abrams tanks. This is the most advanced transportable missile defense radar on land within the US military, and is appropriately paired with one of the most advanced interceptor missiles. However, this is also the most expensive mobile defense system, with each interceptor missile costing $12.7 million, and the entire THAAD battery costing well over $1 billion, including missiles. According to the US Army, the THAAD has never failed to intercept a missile, and maintains a 100% intercept rate as of the time of this video. But the cost of the most expensive ground vehicles doesn't end with the THAAD system. There are two technologies that are evolving rapidly and could end up costing even more than the radars. These include high energy lasers and land-based mobile hypersonic weapon systems. These are both very much real technologies that the US military possesses, but just not in full-scale production numbers. For now, these are only demonstrators, so it would be unfair to compare. Before we get into the vehicles for the maritime domain, I want to thank our partner CyberGhost VPN for sponsoring this video. With over 38 million users worldwide and over 20,000 excellent reviews on Trustpilot, it's one of the best VPNs out there. A VPN is essential for protecting your digital privacy. Plenty of eyes are watching, and even incognito mode doesn't prevent that. Your internet service provider, your school or works IT department, even your home Wi-Fi router can all track what you do online, and that's where CyberGhost VPN comes in. Simply select one of their over 100 locations before you browse to encrypt and reroute all of your traffic through their secure servers. This way, no one will ever know about your online activity. CyberGhost also unlocks geo-restricted games and content from over 40 streaming platforms. For example, say you want to watch Top Gun, which isn't available in the US Netflix market, but is available in other countries. Simply change your location to one of those countries, and you'll be able to watch that movie now with your new location. With the link in the description, you can get their best deal ever, just $2.03 a month, plus 4 months for free, which is 84% off. There's even a 45-day money-back guarantee it's a great product, I personally use it and definitely recommend it. By signing up using the link in the description, you'll also help support the channel so I can continue creating more videos like this one. And now back to the video. Out at sea, we have ships and submarines that dwarf the land-based vehicles in terms of cost. Starting with the third most expensive vehicle in the maritime domain, the new Columbia-class submarines that are currently under construction, at a price of $10.5 billion per submarine, including research and development. The US Navy is purchasing 12 of these submarines in order to replace the current fleet of nuclear-capable and nuclear-powered Ohio-class submarines. The second most expensive vessel in the US military is the Zumwalt Stealth Destroyer, at a price of $10.61 billion per ship including R&D, beating the cost of the Columbia-class submarines by just a pocket change $110 million. The US Navy originally intended to purchase 32 of these ships, which would have spread out the $14.5 billion cost of development across multiple ships. But as strategy shifted over the years, the number of ships the Navy sought to purchase dwindled down to just three, which has left the Zumwalt in a bit of an awkward position, as it's too costly to field when compared to other ships with similar capabilities. However, since the Zumwalt was designed to be able to integrate new weapon systems quickly, it'll likely become the first ship to field the new hypersonic missiles that are currently under development. The most expensive vessel for the US Navy, which also happens to be the most expensive vehicle across the entire US military currently, is the nuclear-powered Ford-class aircraft carrier at a whopping $16.3 billion per ship, including research and development, and counting. Even without the research and development costs, 
costs. The fourth class aircraft carrier is still the most expensive vehicle in the military at $14.1 billion per ship. The Ford and its predecessor, the Nimitz class aircraft carriers, are some of the largest ships in the world, with a displacement of 100,000 tons and a length of over three and a half football fields. To put this aircraft carrier's cost into scale, the price of a single Ford class aircraft carrier would be enough to build 1,068 modern M1A2 Abrams tanks. That's roughly half of the entire active tank force within the US military. The Navy plans to order 10 of these aircraft carriers to replace the current fleet of Nimitz class aircraft carriers. The Nimitz class also had a substantial cost of approximately $9.5 billion per ship after adjusting for inflation. A substantial amount, but not quite enough to make it in the top three. Switching over to the air, we have a tie for the third most expensive aircraft in the US between the current pair of presidential planes and the successor to the B-2 bomber known as the B-21. The two VC-25A presidential planes had a cost of about $713 million each to the government after adjusting for inflation. But that figure doesn't account for the fact that the manufacturer for these planes, Boeing, took a roughly $385 million loss building the two planes in 1989. This would bring the total cost of each VC-25A presidential plane to about $1.14 billion after adjusting for inflation and accounting for Boeing's losses. The B-21, on the other hand, has an estimated cost of $1.04 billion per bomber. This puts the cost of both aircraft within the margin of error of inflation adjustment, especially considering that the B-21's development costs are still ongoing. The first B-21 was unveiled in December of of 2022 and is currently finalizing its testing and evaluation phase, with the first B-21s expected to enter service within this decade. The Air Force plans to purchase at least 100 B-21s, though there's even talks about increasing that number. For now, the B-2 remains the active stealth bomber within the US Air Force and is our second most expensive aircraft at $4.01 billion per bomber, including research and development. The US Air Force originally had 21 active B-2 bombers, but to this day only 19 remain in active service. This is because two of the bombers were lost in separate accidents, including one in an accident that occurred in 2008 in Guam, and the other in 2022 at Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, where a B-2 was damaged, and while technically the B-2 was repairable, the cost was so high that the Air Force just retired it instead. This also coincidentally occurred around the same time that Google updated its satellite map in 2022, so you can even see it for yourself. The most expensive aircraft in the US military is the next generation of presidential planes, at a current estimate cost to the government of $2.8 billion per plane, including R&D. But there's more to the story. Boeing is on track to once again take a financial loss on building the presidential planes, this time for over $2.4 billion, and means that the actual cost of each plane is well over $4 billion and counting. This is four times the price of the current presidential planes, and the planes aren't even finished yet, making the whole situation a head-scratcher, and really makes one wonder, what is in those planes? Before we get into the space domain, it's important to note that there are programs that have very little publicly available information and likely exceed billions of dollars in budget size. This is done through the use of a black budget, which are funds that don't have specific item names available to the public. These classified budgets make up about 10% of the annual defense budget. Major technologically advanced programs can live inside of these classified budgets. For example, the predecessor to the SR-71 Blackbird, known as the A-12, was originally funded through a black budget and wasn't public acknowledged at all for six years. Some of the programs that are currently speculated to have substantial black budget funding today include the X-37B, a reusable orbital space vehicle with a classified mission and program, Project Mayhem, which is believed to be a new type of hypersonic vehicle capable of Mach 10 speeds and designed to carry multiple types of payloads, including reconnaissance sensors and or munitions. There's also the next generation air dominance fighter, which has some publicly announced funding, but specific information and quantities remain secret. Even the B-21 may have had some allocations of black budget funding for specific systems, and there could also very well be completely unacknowledged vehicles that are funded through the black budget. That being said, as far as the publicly acknowledged space vehicles are concerned, there are several military intelligence satellites that run well into the billions of dollars per unit, starting with the third most expensive, which is a spy satellite known as KH-11, operated by the National Reconnaissance Office, with an estimated cost of $3.3 billion per satellite. This is a black budget satellite program, and a vague price was only determined after an award letter was released in 2014 by the NRO 
for quote, delivering two major system acquisitions worth more than $5 billion. And though the specific capabilities are classified, there have been several photos released that are believed to have originated from one of the two to four KH-11 satellites that are currently active, though of course at a downscaled resolution to hide their true capability. The second most expensive space vehicles are the individual satellites of the space-based infrared system, or SIBRS. These satellites are tasked with monitoring infrared signatures of ballistic missile launches around the world. Each of the six individual satellites in the SIBRS program had a cost of about $4.07 billion after adjusting for inflation. These satellites were launched from 2011 to 2022 and are designed for a lifespan of 12 years. The most expensive publicly acknowledged space vehicle is the successor to the SIBRS satellites, known as the Next Generation Overhead Persistent Infrared Geosynchronous Satellites, at 4.77 billion US dollars per satellite, including research and development, and not including launch cost. These satellites are designed to monitor specific sites around the world similar to the SIBRS satellites. A total of four Next Gen Overhead Persistent Infrared Satellites are being launched, with two geostationary orbit satellites at the price of 4.77 billion previously mentioned mentioned, and two polar orbit satellites at a relatively cheaper 2.9 billion per satellite. A notable mention in the space domain is NASA's Artemis program. While not necessarily a military project, many of the objectives of the Artemis program can be interpreted as militarily strategic, such as establishing a moon base before any other country in order to be the first to gain access to unique resources available on the moon. These resources will be essential to future military technology and will widen the technological gap significantly between competing nations. With each Artemis SLS rocket coming in at a cost of $4.2 billion, this would put each individual rocket at the number two spot in the space domain. If you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and feel free to try out the new hype feature that YouTube recently rolled out designed to help give small creators a boost. I've included all of the sources in the description. Thanks for watching.